Anyway, let's uh, let's move on to the topic of pornography now. I'm not a big fan of pornography. This, this podcast is taking a turn. Yeah, I've, I've, <laughs> I've watched my fair share as every young man or a man who has been young once with access to the internet has uh, watched. And uh, it's not good for you. It's an evil. There's no question of it in my mind. It's not just me being like hyper conservative. The reason you don't post the links of pornography you watch on your Facebook feed is because you don't want people knowing because it's gross. There's the occasional person that does. You just think, why? Yeah, exactly. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> they have no sense of propriety. Because what you, you know, everyone, everyone does it, but you know you shouldn't, right? And, uh, and it turns out that the porn industry itself is actually, if you can believe this, hugely disgusting and exploitative to those people within it. Yeah. I mean, you may remember what happened with Pornhub recently. As in, like, last year. Oh, uh, what happened? Uh, all of a sudden, they deleted, like, 90% of their content, and it was because they were found to be hosting a lot of uh, rape or oh, child porn. I, did, I missed that, actually. So they, they insisted, I didn't know that happened. Yeah, they insisted from now on, every user who uploaded had to be verified. Yeah. So, like, yeah, the 90% of their content just disappeared overnight. So, yeah, if you want to find that, you've got to go on Twitter. <laughs> um, I'm not even joking. They, like the, and ironically, yeah. You, some of the hashtags on Twitter that I've seen going around, like... Well, there are maps on there. Open yeah, them, yeah, yeah. And then they get deleted. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. So. But uh, but anyway, before we start, if you want uh, some life lessons, go over to lowseas.com, sign up to support us five or a month, and uh, check out this Life Lessons from Labyrinth. Now, I actually really like this as a kind of representation because you have the young girl in Labyrinth who is quite sort of pure, right? She's, she's quite um, so saintly in a way. Then you have David Bowie, who kind of represents the sort of debauchery aspect of life. And uh, and this, I think, fits quite nicely because this is essentially like the before and after of people who have been through the porn industry, right? So there are a bunch of, uh, like, and this is not, like, unusual or modern, right? So have you ever heard of the porn movie Deep Throat? Uh, no. Is this how things were actually named back in the day? Yes. In the, well, well, you say back in the day. This is 1972, right? You get to the next one, right? So yeah, back in the day for me. The, 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 the chap who starred in that was a guy called Harry Reeves, right? Now, this Deep Throat was like the, the movie that popularized um, hardcore pornography because it was kind of mem memetic. Uh, so it's so like quaint almost now. Oh, yeah. It's, it, oh, oh, my yeah. God, he does a what? <laughs> well, compared to what you'll see on the internet now, yeah, this is... I haven't actually seen this, so I don't actually know what's in it. But I, I assume it's Slop, just all... Sloppy sex. research. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> terrible research. But this is kind of infamous. Everyone's heard of this, right? As I say, it's a pop culture phenomenon that brought pornography to mainstream audiences. Uh, but um, this, th this chap, Harry Reams, um, his life was terrible actually and he regretted everything he did he spent uh, a decade as a, a successful <laughs> porn star right but alcohol addiction brought him to his knees a religious conversion was the catalyst for change and since the 80s late 80s he worked in salt lake, salt lake city as a real estate agent his wife uh, reported his death because he'd been suffering from cancer right he played the male lead in deep throat and uh he hated it his wife said he hated doing porn he hated doing it, but it was all he could do to make money, right? And his his co-star, it's uh, Linda Lovelace, I think it is, also became an, an anti-porn activist after doing this movie, right? So, so it goes to show you, if, if the two people involved in, like, the most famous porno ever end up becoming anti-porn activists, well, it should tell you something about the nature of pornography, right? The reason I'm laughing so much is because I hear, I haven't seen the movie either, no. but the idea of, like, oh, my God, they did a, a deep throat scene and then their whole lives went to pot. I just imagine if they were still around today just to see the internet. Oh, just God. Think. Well, well, yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. How much worse things have become. But also their lives don't look that bad. Like, stop taking the alcohol. Well, that's the question, right? So if we get to the, the, the next one, uh, there are a lot, this is not reserved for men or women for these regrets. Both of them regret doing pornography right so the first example on this is a chap called greg now i never i don't i'm not familiar with any of these people to be honest greg guevara no no it, okay. scroll down and you can see the first guy um his, his name's greg and i watched i watched his video and i watched all the videos on this because this is from a website called fight the new drug right so uh, greg was uh, apparently one of the most successful porn stars ever uh he'd starred in a thousand adult feature films in 23 years right he start, first started in porn in 1988, uh, became one of the most successful actors. He was a four-time winner of the Adult Video News Best Actor Award and was put into their Hall of Fame in 2002. 
but only after he left the porn industry in 2011 was he able to share the reality of why he started doing porn and how 23 years of the toxic industry affected his life. And he's the chap that I was speaking about earlier where he, he I mean, this is it's actually quite harrowing where he's like, you know, I just did it because it was easy money and I got, you know, more and more money as time went on. But afterwards I realized that I couldn't form romantic attachments to women. But I just could not see them as anything other than sex objects. And I had no interest in being around them. And it was just like, right, okay. And so he ended up, like, essentially... Uh, thanks, John, for that information. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not even going to mention it. Um, <laughs> but he, he would basically just spend all of his money on drugs and alcohol to dull the pain of being so lonely and feeling so gross all the time. And Was he gay? No. Why? No. I don't know. I just started wondering. Never mind. No, no, he wasn't gay. You just, <laughs> like, the way... Just making sure, that's all. The, the way that pornography made him treat women affected, because he couldn't form an attachment to any of these people. God, yeah, I mean, did he have kids? Uh, I think he does, yeah. Because I'm wondering if uh, that also affects his, like, non-sexual familial relationships with women. I don't know. I, he didn't actually bring up kids. I would assume he does, but I don't know. Um, but the point is this, it ruined his emotional state. Like, so he was just totally depressed. This is why the other guy converts to Mormonism. He's like, I need, I need to be saved. I need Jesus. <laughs> yeah, no, that's literally <laughs> what it is, right? And there's another chap on this called Joshua who grew up in a small town in South Carolina, wanted to get, he was, you know, wanted to be a model, uh, moved to LA, got sucked into the porn industry. Uh, one, you know, he's very successful in the porn industry. Uh, you know, lots of alcohol, lots of depression, and is now a passionate anti-porn advocate. So again, people coming out of this going, you've got to not, you just avoid this at all costs, right? And you like, you know, wide-eyed country boy goes to LA. What happens? He comes out going, stay away. This place is awful. It will consume you. You know, no, no surprise. Uh, and there's another article on that. The, the, there are some women on this one, but the, this is very interesting. Cause like, okay, that's, that's from the men's perspective where it's like, look, it ruins my ability to love women. Well, for women, it ruins their self-esteem and their view of themselves. And uh, so there are lots of examples in this that are just, they're just harrowing, to be honest. Um, so the, the first, this, this woman here is actually not featured in this article, she's featured in the other one. But this, that's Alia, I think it is, uh, who was, um, came from an abusive home where she'd been sexually abused as a child and was essentially sex trafficked by an older man she'd met on like MySpace or something uh, and into prostitution and then eventually into the porn industry and she was just like this is just awful is that a step up or a step down what do you mean a step up or a step down who cares this I'm is, just wondering this is a hellish life oh yeah, yeah it's all hell I'm just yeah. wondering which one's more hell but uh, and a lot of them are apparently quite brutal like uh, Alex says one particular film was the most brutal depressing scary scene I have ever done I tried to block it out from my memory uh, due to the severe abuse I received during the filming, the male performer had a natural hatred towards women in the sense that he, he has always been known to be more brutal than is ever needed. Yeah, well, I imagine that a lot of male porn stars actually do kind of dislike women because they're essentially trained not to see them as human beings, to see them as sex objects. And that's going to be a consequence of, you know, the like with Greg, the previous one, like, you know, it's going to make you weird and bitter it's awful like alexa says uh like most perform porn performers i perpetuated this lie as in the lie that it was it was good uh one of my favorite things to say when i was asked if i liked doing a particular scene was uh i only do what i like i wouldn't do it if i didn't like it i would say this with a big fake smile and giggle what a total lie i i did what i had to do to get work in porn i did what i knew would help me gain fame in the industry it's a very bad goal yep Jesse says, it was the most degrading, embarrassing, horrible thing ever. I had to shoot an interactive DVD, which takes hours and hours, and the uh, she was crying, and the agent would let her leave, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and just awful. Just the most degrading, embarrassing, horrible thing ever. Well, that one there, it's also just terrible working conditions. Like she said, oh, yeah. she's got a 104 degree fever, and the dude yeah, yeah. was like stepping on her head for the goddamn reason. Yeah. It, the, but just the whole thing is just awful, right? Andy says, after a year or so of that so-called glamorous life, I sadly discovered that drugs and drinking were part of the lifestyle. I began to drink and party out of control. Co cocaine, alcohol, next were my favorites. Before long, I turned into a person I did not want to be. I, after doing so many hardcore scenes, I couldn't do it anymore. I just remember being in horrible situations and experiencing extreme depression and being alone and sad. You just also see that she 
left the porn industry. Oh yeah, but then in 2014 went back. Yeah, so yeah, and, uh, but yeah, you know, but she's undoubtedly going to be doing it because she needs the money. Well, what else is she going to do? Well, that's exactly right. You know, after being part of an anti-porn activist group, she's like, well, okay, but that's not paying the bills. No, but it's also, I, I mean, I'm not saying this is even necessarily wrong because we should. Mm demonize getting into this lifestyle because it doesn't seem like a good career choice to say the least but if you're in porn what are you going to do after that well we'll get to that in a minute um jan says of course i lied to my fans i let them believe i lived a fantasy life that was far from the truth i fed into their fantasies i said i wanted sex 24 7 and made it seem like i absolutely loved what i did and i was living this happy life i gave them hope and insight into their relationships by telling what to do i started to feel like an important nobody they knew elizabeth the porn star but they would never know jan the real me i had to do whatever the producer pleased and i had to accept it or else no pay sometimes you get uh, to a gig and the producer would change what the scene was and you just have to do it if you didn't like it and uh jesse says people in the porn industry are numb to real life and i like zombies walking around the abuse that goes on in this industry is completely ridiculous the way these young ladies are treated it's totally sick and brainwashing i left due to the trauma i experienced even though i was only there a short time i hang out with a lot of people in adult industry everyone from contract girls to gonzo actresses everyone has the same problems everyone is on drugs it's an empty lifestyle trying to fill up a void i became horribly addicted to heroin and crack i overdosed at least three times and had tricks pull knives on me half beaten to death she goes on uh, and Jenna says, it was torture for seven years. I was miserable. I was lonely. Every, eventually, I eventually turned to drugs and alcohol and attempted suicide. I knew I wanted out, but I didn't know how to get out. But this is just such a common and repeated refrain from all of these sorts of people. Uh, and then you get like people like Mia Khalifa, who seem to be coping by becoming a leftist activist. But, um, you know, she says uh, it was terrible decisions on her part. I don't think low self-esteem discriminates against anyone. It doesn't matter if you come from a great family or not so great background. And she was doing it for male attention, for, for, for validation. And then you get those people like, yeah, but this is it's a kind of terrible strategy. But yeah, I mean, of course it is. But, but yeah, I mean, that's the message, really, which is just, like, mm. could you think of anything stupider than I'm going to get into porn? That'll be good for me. No, no, it's it's a terrible, terrible suggestion. Uh, and but the thing is there's this sort of feminist view, oh, this is empowering. But even those porn stars who are like, yeah, I'm empowered by having sex on camera, but I do want to quit the industry. It's like, yes. <laughs> I, I don't want my empowerment. <laughs> yeah. I want the burqa, actually. Yeah. She's, she's looking forward to getting out of the porn industry, even though it's empowering. Right? And then you've got the consequences after you leave, right? And that's a social stigma that car that's carried with you. As Brie Olson found out, she quit porn in 2011 and has been since trying to transition to mainstream acting. For many, she's been known, uh, best known as one of Charlie Sheen's infamous goddesses, one of his several girlfriends that lived with him during his 2011 breakdown. Uh, Olson says that five years after giving, this was in 2016, five years after giving up porn for good, she still feels negative effects every day. When I go out, I feel like I'm wearing slut across my forehead. All of the mean things people say to me on the internet, that's how I feel about how I walk, when I walk out the door. Uh, I've gotten to the point where there are days to weeks at a time that I don't leave my house because I don't feel like facing the world. I get so disappointed when I meet a new friend and it turns out they don't want to be my friend anymore. It's easier for me to stay inside my house. People treat me as if I'm a paedophile. They, treat, they don't treat me like I'm an ex-sex worker. They treat me like I would be damaging to children. That's interesting, isn't it? It's also really, really unfair. Well, I mean, like, paedophiles get treated way better than that. But yeah, pe paedophiles are allowed to use PayPal. Well, um, they're allowed to advertise themselves on Twitter with no problems. And yeah, there, there's an advocacy movement behind them. But the thing is, it, I don't think it's entirely unreasonable that people would treat porn stars as if they're damaging to children because there are lots of children who are damaged by porn. Now, you could say, well, it's really the fault of the parents for allowing them access to a smartphone to all of this porn. And I completely stand by that, which is why I don't think children should have smartphones. But, uh, and I know you're very Luddite on this question. Oh, totally. And I will I, I, I will be vindicated by the fact that my children won't have mental health issues when they leave the house. I don't know, though, because if if someone who has gone through hell do you, and knows the least wholesome things in the world and the most destroying of innocent things, hmm. do you reckon they'd be better or worse at making sure that any children around them are kept innocent? I don't know. But I would say that this person deeply regrets having gone through that and would suggest that uh, they shouldn't. <laughs> I know, but that's my point. Is like, well, surely she would actually be quite good with kids in the sense of being like, don't show them anything indecent. 
maybe. Maybe she's highly conservative in her opinions now. Um, and she, but she says this, right? And I think this is really interesting. I wish that people would treat me like they'd treat a married registered nurse with 2.5 kids in Indiana. Oh, for well, God's sake. Sorry, that, that, that. Maybe you should do that. Well... Yeah, maybe that's what you should do. I wish I had a million dollars. <laughs> no, 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 but that's not... A million dollars is a, is a difficult thing to attain and, like, an unrealistic goal. Being a married nurse with two and a half kids in Indiana, that's a totally plausible goal that a regular person can achieve. She's still going to be someone who engaged in sex work, though. Exactly. Like that's part of her baggage Exactly. Now. So, but, but after going through all of this and after making all the money and getting all the fame that she got doing this, she sat there going, God, I wish I was just like a regular person. Like, you know, the, the people who have gone through it are like... Don't do this. I wish I was you. You know, that's what they're saying. I suppose the worst aspect about all of this is it bleeds into OnlyFans, obviously. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, it's bad enough when you've got people who were... I mean, before the days of the internet, I can't imagine how many women ended up doing porn. Oh, then, it would have been a much smaller percentage than now, yeah. Since then, obviously, it got way worse. So there with OnlyFans being literally yeah. any girl with a phone on the planet, and you don't even need an outlet. And we see plenty of OnlyFans regret as well. Men won't date me because I'm an online porn star on OnlyFans. Like, okay. Do you see that lady who's blown up on Twitter? She got like 800,000 likes or something no. a couple of days. Uh, she posted that, oh, guys say that they won't date someone who's done OnlyFans. Well, thanks. I never wanted an insecure loser anyway. It's like, well, that's good because I didn't want a whore. So, but also, <laughs> you started the OnlyFans because you're an insecure loser. There's that too. That's why you did it. Well, you wanted male validation and you didn't have any money. That's why you started the OnlyFans. Or money. No, both. They want it's like Mia Khalifa. I saying. don't know the individual. They, they no, they all say this. They all say they want male. They do it for male validation, and there's a huge financial incentive. These things combine. I don't know. When I think of Belle Delphine, I think of money rather than male validation. Yeah, but that's because you never watched the podcast with her on, right? I, I've seen some of her podcasts. Yeah. Wait, well, did she talk about that? Yeah, she's. Wait, right, she, I'm, there, I'm there's a particular off. podcast where she's asked about her father and a relationship with her father, oh, and it's no. terrible. Oh. And they don't speak, <laughs> and they haven't spoken for like ten years. Oh, uh, and I, I watched actual this, daddy issues. <laughs> all of them. It's for male validation. This is what um, the Alia one. When I was watching it, she was she was doing it for male validation. They want because they don't have strong father figures in their lives, and so they do it for male validation and. The reason they do this and not something else is because there's huge amounts of money involved with things like OnlyFans. That's what it's all about. I was calling my dad. Uh. Yeah. It's really what they want is to have a Skype call with their dads. Which is going to be less and less likely the more porn you do, <laughs> that's for sure. Yes. Um, but um, but it, she says at the very end, right? Um, the, well, not at the very end, actually. She says there are no royalties in porn, right? So she can, you get paid a chunk of money and then you lose access to any money that is made off of that so she sees her own face all over the internet and people are still making money off of her but she's shunned by society and broke and uh, she says i send a very strong message to young girls don't do porn as much as you want to embrace your sexuality and say i can do whatever i want with my body you are going to have a life of crap in front of you you can never work with children after you do porn you can never work in the medical field after you do porn these are things that teenage girls don't think about how people treat you for the rest of your life it's not worth it yeah, 100% true. Sorry, I just yeah. can't stand that phrase, embrace your sexuality. But this is the feminism that, that's literally, she has been destroyed by feminism. That's what she's telling us. But it's just, it's, it's not you can find someone and then, you know, do more than missionary for the sole purpose of, you know, procreation. Yeah. It's never that. It's it's become a, a plasterer's radio. Yeah, becomes a porn star. Yeah. It's like, well, there are there are consequences to these things. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the Epoch series, this one on Harold Hardrada between Carl and Bo. If you want to find out what else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.